Well, the new year is bringing a lot of uncertainties when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic as the number of cases continues to spike and health orders continue to evolve. The CDC recently changing its guidelines for isolation, reducing the number of days from 10 to 5 for people who test positive. Dr. Malathi Srinivasan with Stanford Healthcare is joining us now. First of all, why is the CDC making this change and do you agree with it? Yeah, so uh, first, Happy New Year. Uh, it's great to be back. And um, uh, the CDC seems to be prioritizing practicality over better science. They're recommending now that people can return to work who have people who have COVID can return to work after five days with symptoms if they start feeling better or five days after a positive COVID test. And with this strategy, we are going to have much more community and workplace spread than we had before. A much better approach would have been to have a customized approach to have five days of quarantine and a rapid uh, repeat PCR test before returning to work, especially for people who are interacting with the public or in high risk settings. Because there's three problems with the current CDC strategy. First, the CDC changed its recommendation from 10 days to five days because only a fraction of people were quarantining properly, about a third or so. But with the new strategy, that's not clear that people who weren't quarantining before are going to quarantine now, that they'll find five days more acceptable. The CDC hopes that's true, but nobody knows if that's true. And the second is while we're most contagious in the three to five days before symptoms start and earlier in the infection, people with COVID have detectable live virus and viral particles for a week to four weeks, and they all recover at different rates depending on their immune system. So people who are vaccinated, for instance, uh, like the majority of people in the Bay Area, will clear their infections faster, but people who are unvaccinated or who have compromised immune systems or who have been more sick will be infectious for a longer period of time. So a targeted strategy of retesting is what's much, much better. And then third is that Omicron is a game changer. This is not the same virus that we were dealing with just six months ago with Delta. And with Omicron surging, and it's so much more catchy than Delta and Alpha, it's time to be more cautious than less cautious. So um, I, I disagree with the CDC strategy uh, because I think that they omitted a crucial step, which is customization and retesting. Well, Omicron has been with us for several weeks now. We know it is more transmissible, but is it more dangerous? And how well are the current vaccines protecting against it? So Omicron is two to four times more catchy than the Delta variant, which was about twice as catchy as the Alpha variation. And it's infecting people of all ages, including more detectable illness in children. The incubation period is shorter. Everything with Omicron is speeded up. So the incubation period is shorter, about two to four days versus five to seven days for Alpha and Delta. And it's a little early to know if Omicron is less severe in unvaccinated people, but we have been seeing a holiday surge in the emergency departments and in hospitalizations compared to a few months ago. And this is happening at a time of critical hospital staffing shortages. So for most people, especially for people who are vaccinated, Omicron symptoms seem to be much milder. But, um, you know, a large part of the U.S. has either been vaccinated and a lot of people have had COVID already. And we know that Omicron can reinfect people. So we know also that getting the third dose of the mRNA vaccine or the second dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccines helps cut down infections, hospitalizations, and very importantly, cuts down deaths. So the mRNA vaccines are probably 60% effective against symptomatic infection with Omicron and probably more than 90% effective against death and hospitalization. But we still, it's very early. Um, you know, a lot of the exposures happened over the holidays. We're just past the holidays now entering the new year. So we'll know much more in the next couple of weeks. So it's very important to still wear your mask get boosted, and stay very careful with social distancing uh, during gatherings. Let's talk a little bit about the symptoms. Are the symptoms of Omicron any different from the other variants? And how can you tell the difference between having Omicron or something like the common cold or the flu? Absolutely. So Omicron symptoms are very similar to the common cold, you know, a sore throat, a runny nose, a headache. And we're seeing less people have a fever or losing taste or smell, which is what we saw with alpha and delta. Um, 
So uh, there was a recent uh, United Kingdom study that of about 170 people who used an app to track their symptoms, and only half of those had fever, cough, or loss of taste or smell. So it's going to be much more similar to what you'd see every day. So here's the thing. If you think that you have a cold or that you might have COVID, please go get COVID tested. And the only way to know which virus you have is to get tested. And at Stanford, we have both the um, COVID uh, PCR testing on its own, but we also do something called co-testing, which is where we test for COVID, but we also test for all of the other common respiratory pathogens. Now we don't do that for everybody because for the majority of people, you're gonna, if it's not COVID, you're gonna get a cold, you'll recover, you're not gonna get too sick. But for people who are immunocompromised or who are at high risk of complications, we'll often do co-testing. So um, that's important, for instance, if someone has influenza and they're at high risk, um, you know, getting something like Tamiflu or some of these other uh, medications may help reduce the severity of their illness and may prevent some complications. So we do want to know for some people, but for the majority of people, we just need to know whether or not you have COVID. So um, please, if you do have any signs of a cold, uh, immediately, immediately go get tested. And let's talk masking. Omicron is so transmissible. Should we all be ditching those cloth masks and opting for surgical masks instead? Right. So cloth masks are better than nothing. But with Omicron, they are much closer to nothing than they were before. So cloth masks only filter about 30, 35 percent of COVID particles, whereas surgical masks, especially the polypropylene ones, can uh, filter uh, you know, over 90 percent of them. KN95 and N95 masks, which are respirator systems, which are a closed loop for, your, um, for breathing, filter even more if they're worn properly. So um, uh, with Omicron and all the other respiratory viral particles around, you just don't want to take any chances. Uh, COVID travels in aerosol particles that are 0.3 microns. As a, as a reference, a strand of human hair is about 70 microns. So these are super, super tiny. Uh, COVID itself is only 0.1 micron, but the, the aerosolized particles it travels in are a little bit larger. And uh, cloth masks don't do a good job at filtering out anything but the largest particles, and they barely get to aerosols, uh, certainly not at 0.3. Um, surgical masks will capture more, and again, KN95 will get most of these. And the three-layer surgical masks use a combination of techniques to eliminate uh, the particles from impaction and diffusion. They have actually an electrical static force, which can also attract these particles. So they'll prevent you from breathing the particles out. They'll also prevent you from breathing the particles in as long as they're fitted over your face properly. And you know, early in the pandemic, the CDC was very concerned that there wouldn't be enough respirators. So the N95s that are approved uh, by NIOSH um, to uh, uh, help the healthcare workers who are treating everybody stay safe so we could continue to provide high quality healthcare. But now we're much further along, we're you know, two years into this and we have easy availability of a three layer surgical masks and of KN95 masks, which are the uh, masks that are produced mainly in Asia but have the same performance characteristics as the N95 masks. And there's also many more N95 masks. So please, please, if you're going to wear a mask, wear one that will protect you, your family, and your community. Dr. Malathi Srinivasan with Stanford HealthCare. Thank you.